Welcome to my Ask Me Anything. I put it out there. I'm gonna answer your questions. Please don't make me regret this. <laughs> Let's see what's up. Okay, first question is, ooh, how long have you had your locks? So I'm actually just about to hit my lock anniversary. I got my locks in August 2016. So that's seven years since I started my lock. Next question. In the past year, anything you do differently, anything you wouldn't change at all? I made no mistakes. What can I say? Oh, lies. I wish I started this YouTube journey sooner. It would have been amazing to document more of that first eight months of me being fun employed it was like an extended staycation exploration time as an artist and creative i honestly enjoyed that time more than my traveling experience it's funny since i left my job way more than a year ago it doesn't encompass my process of leaving but i do want to speak to that the willingness to walk away is just such powerful high leverage so i wish i exercised that to the maximum explicitly ask for what i wanted just to give them the opportunity to say no i spent over fifteen hundred dollars on a job application process and I didn't even get an offer. So like there's been mess, don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm living a perfect drama free life, but even those experiences, there's such value. The people I've met this throughout my life and journey, I wouldn't risk changing things and risk not meeting them. Next question. What are some things you do to keep a positive mindset? Who said I was positive? I feel a lot of pessimism lately. Just dealing with all the uncertainty and just the environment that I'm dealing with or we're all dealing with in terms of the economy, searching for jobs or additional income streams. It doesn't always feel like there's an abundance. So I feel like I there are times I definitely need to intentionally step into that abundance mindset. I have my little mantras written down here and there. The most recent one is from a song there's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. Like this, that abundance. Like there's some money out here for me to get. One thing I remind myself, especially when I think about my salary and my goals around that, I pick a salary a bit higher than what I feel comfortable with because I know there's an incompetent white man who is making that money doing nothing, so I might as well be making this money. I definitely be journaling. I definitely be meditating to, it's more of like an energy, positive energy thing for me is karaoke. I love that shit. There's something about singing and this like expressing and this having that fun and this allowing yourself to be an imperfect, like I ain't no singer, so. There's something about karaoke that's always uplifting for me. I've done an entire playlist and I call it emotional DJing when I will pick songs that will represent my energy or where I want the energy to go and the whole playlist will be a progression. And I wrote a letter to myself really saying messages and mantras I wanted to carry forward for myself into the next year. I love podcasts, that's been my go-to lately. And I love Jay Shetty's On Purpose. I was consuming and hailing that, especially once I was starting to travel and my mental health was extremely low. It seemed like every episode just had such a powerful message around positivity and mindfulness. And it was also just like honesty around human emotions that are really difficult, like, Jealousy, shame, just so many things. All right. Ooh, I got a little teary eye with that one. I'm like, what makes you positive? I'm li literally crying. Okay. This one's blank. Whoops. <laughs> uh, let's keep going. I'm always here for you if you need anything. So this was one of the anonymous ones. So thank you, anonymous. I'm here for you too. Not the best winker, but I got you. Ooh, this was another anonymous one. 
biggest red flags in a guy. My relationships, my relationship with dating, not even my relationships, those have not existed. The biggest red flag for me is if on a person to person level, I don't think we would vibe as friends, like removing uh, the initial tra attraction. I know that's hard, but if there isn't like some level of playfulness, some consideration, some value alignment, especially politically. I really don't make assumptions based on race, but I am very cautious, especially if you elect to not put your political affiliation on your profile, I'm gonna expect it's not the same as mine. I was listening to the podcast, We Can Do Hard Things, and Logan Yuri was on it, and she mentioned with dating, people have this tendency to hide themselves and then slowly reveal themselves, but it's actually the opposite of what you want. You wanna have your deal breakers, that might be a deal breaker for someone else, right out in the forefront, so you ain't wasting your time with people who aren't your people. And I love books on dating, I've read many of them. And also, I'm like chronically single, so hit me up. Why are you so fine? <laughs> like I said, hit me up. Oh. Who asked this? This is anonymous. I literally have no idea who asked this. Why they wanna know my pain like this? Ever cried at school? Definitely. I'm assuming they mean like K through 12, but I was definitely chronically crying through college. The only thing that's coming to mind was an after school situation and, uh, <laughs> am I really gonna share this story? Uh, I was on the track and field team. At one point, I had to go to the bathroom and I asked my coach if I could go and he was like, after the 600. Oh, this story, why did I tell it? Um, so I ran the 600 and then I went to the bathroom afterwards, but I had already gone, y'all. And yes, I was like a teenager at the time. Uh, I knew how to hold my bowels. I, it's just hard to hold you're peeing while you're running, basically sprinting almost half a mile. But anyway, so I went to the bathroom, saw what happened, and then I was like, shit, I gotta go home. And my, my track coach wanted me to stay after our sprints to do some jumping because he thought I would be a good high jumper. So I was waiting for my mom to pick me up. And while I was waiting for my mom to pick me up, he came, my coach came in, and he just laid it on me. He was yelling at me, saying I'm not committed, and I cried. <laughs> Who asked this? Why are we talking about black tears? Don't we have enough of that in media? I'm done with this question. I'm done. Um, <sighs> okay. You a homie. Thank you, Anonymous. You are too. Thank <laughs> you.